got that first Wally in Pro Stock Motorcycle, I just the relief or the weight or the celebration had to have been mega. In 99, we won our first race, Dallas, Texas. Remember it like last year. And I remember when we won, the craziest part of it was, is like, I teared up, got emotional, and Troy was crying, and he hit me on the back and said, see, see, see. He goes, all those struggles, this is the victory. And then your whole mindset changed. The little kid, but people don't realize too, Amanda, because you didn't know me back then, but I used to talk way too fast, way too fast. I used to stutter. I, was like, I, 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 I couldn't get it all out. I wanted you to know what I was thinking right now. I wasn't, a turcul I wasn't as articulated on, a, on the scene with the speeches and talking and everything else. It's like, I didn't know what to say or how to say it. And everybody, oh, you're great in front of a camera. Or you're great with this. Or you're great with that. I'm like, that was an AB. Like, I was nervous. And I never liked the spotlight being on me. I just got comfortable with being uncomfortable with it, you know? And, uh, and I didn't realize that. And Troy told me, he goes, A.B., when you get used to being comfortable with being uncomfortable, there's nothing that you can't, cannot do. There's nothing that you cannot achieve. There's nothing that you cannot stop moving forward. There's nobody that can stop you. And it's true. Because I look back at now, if you would have asked me back in 1999, even when I won my first race, and you go, Antron, would you realize that you're going to be a 71-time national event winner and you're going to win three world championships in top fuel and you're going to own your own team? I'm like, what are you on? I said, you're on that pipe real good right now, aren't you? You know what I mean? Like, what are you smoking? And, uh, and you know what? You can. And I'm living proof and saying right in front of you is if you put your head down and you never quit and you surround yourself, key, yeah. it's the key. You surround yourself by the right people and no nothing can stop you, nothing. They might slow you down, <laughs> but it's only for a brief minute. I like this concept of getting comfortable with what makes you uncomfortable. You had 16 Wallys in Pro Stock Motorcycle, but your tenure would advance into Top Fuel. When did you start getting that feeling, that uncomfortable feeling that there was a next chapter on? When did Top Fuel start filling your mind? Believe it or not, Top Fuel came up with me like... My first year I raced pro stock bike. We teamed up, like we shared a shot with Daryl Glenn. Mike Dunn was driving a Yankees car, the New York Yankees top fuel dragster. And I just got in it. And Daryl goes, you need to drive a top fuel car. I don't know why you're wasting time on these motorcycles. I'm like, what are you talking about? I can't drive that. Like, that's crazy. Like, didn't think about it. Didn't think that I could do it. And then, lo and behold, as we got going, I started thinking, why can't I do this? And then, you know what happened? I was probably my fifth year racing pro stock bike. We had the, and we've been racing for the US Army for several years. And I'm not gonna say who, cause I'm not gonna blast them. Literally looked me at, me at my face and the engagement we were doing and going, oh, you ride them bikes, you do great at that, but you'd never be able to drive a top fuel car. I looked at him, I go, you just told me that I, could, that I can, I can't, I wouldn't be no good at it, you wouldn't be able to keep up. I'm like, it says, it takes special individuals to do what we do. And they told me that and from that day on, Amanda, I literally go, I'm going to drive a top fuel car. I'm not just going to drive. I'm going to win 
And I said, so I started putting the feelers out. And it literally took me five years of politicking and literally talking to people and let them know what I wanted to do. And Lee Beard with David Powers gave me the opportunity. And Lee fought for me because a few of them were going like, well, we can get this driver, we can get that driver. Lee goes, listen to me. Put this kid in a car. Trust me. This is who I want in, in the race car that I'm tuning. And when I went to Frank Holly's school, I got my license in alcohol, top alcohol tracksers in one, in one school. I did every run, flawless, got it. Study it, rehearsed it, practiced it. Same thing with top fuel. Practice. I sat in top fuel car the first time. Lee Beer goes, I would think that was a professional way you did the burnout, backed it up, and you launched. And the lights you cut the first time you sat in top fuel car is better than any driver has sat and drive for me. And he goes, where you come from? He goes, A.B., you making me look real good. <laughs> I said, I looked down at him. I go, I want it. I want it. I want it. This is what I want to do. And that's how it came. And our, I had 16, think about this. I had 16 full laps down the racetrack in a top fuel car before I raced my first race. Two weeks before I showed up at Pomona for the first race. That's it. 16 laps. 16 laps. And a couple of them weren't even full laps. And we showed up at Pomona and we qualified number one. Four races in, we won. I just want to know if the individual that said that you would never be good in top fuel if you ever beat them. A lot. <laughs> Juicy. A lot. A lot. Did you tell them? Do you remind them of that conversation? Oh, they, they know very well. That's fantastic. I'm sure we can probably guess who that might be, and we won't put anyone on blast, but that is, in, that is insightful information, Antron, that might return at some point <laughs> in your career. Thanks for that. Not a problem. Three-time top field champion, picked up the first one in 2012. You'd go back to back in 2015, 2016. How has this achievement changed your life? In multiple ways, in multiple ways. It, it's, it's changed my life in the standpoint of saying that, you know what, that it is possible to win a championship. Because at first, I've lost a championship several times in pro stock motorcycle. I could tell you multiple ways of winning, of losing championships. Lost a championship in 2009, the second year of racing top fuel. Dominated the whole year, and it was like the first year of the reset the points countdown, right? And I still lost the championship by 20 points, but if we raced the champ the normal way like we did all the previous year, we would have won it by like 300 points. Devastating, devastating. And then, and then we lost it several other times in, in like 2011, same way, dominating that whole year. 2010 was a rough year, but we still won a race and went to like nine finals, but we just didn't win them. We won one race that year. In 2012, we had the same thing where we killed and dominated the whole season. Countdown comes, and we're dominating the countdown, and we have miscues and mishaps. And we almost lost at the end, but we still won. And then we, we had a couple years, like, you know, we had 13. We had a big accident. Set our whole year topsy-turvy. We still won a lot of races, but on and off because we had to rebuild a whole new race car and everything else. 14, had a great year and lost at the end again. And 15, we said, we got to race the countdown. We changed our whole strategy. And we raced it. And we got in the countdown, dominated. Won it before Vegas. Won it in Vegas. Same thing in 16. Then they came out with our team rule where you give you points to half, where you can't lock it up in Vegas. But Eric Andrews did it now. That's crazy. So it changed my way of thinking in so many ways where I start going, all right, we're racing, we're doing this, we're doing that. Then start me thinking like, we won championships, what's next? Maybe I could race funny car. No, uh, we could do that down the road. And that's when my- Excuse me? What's that? Race funny car down the road? 
Oh, Lord, I just told you that? All right, keep going. See that? I got to have this stop having these in-depth talks with you. <laughs> but the thing about it is, and then you start thinking and go, all right, why aren't we winning again? Well, we've been at Don Schumacher Racing. I've been stagnant. The team's been stagnant. We have all these different crew chiefs coming in out the door helping our team. This is happening. That's happening. I have no control. I go, you know, it's time for me to race how I want to race. Not saying where I was racing was bad. We won championships, and DSRs won multiple championship titles in every different class you can think about. But it's time for me to do it the way I want to do it. And then if I mess up, it's my fault. I have no one else to blame, nobody. So I said, you know what? That's what changed. That's what those championships changed where I said, I want to control the narrative and I want to bring people in that I want to race with and I also want to work with partners that I want to partner with. And that's what AB Motorsports about. It's not Antron Brown Motorsports. It's just simply A to B Motorsports. I should put A to B. It's just AB Motorsports. And it's family, partners, and relationships. And that's what AB Motorsports is all about. And about all the people that was close to me, that we could build something special together to go forward. And it's not just building the racing end of it. The motorsports is we're help cultivating and building other organizations to make them strong in motorsports background and also to do other things outside of motorsports like other businesses that we can grow that we're already in the infrastructure of building. And it's like it's going to build this whole platform that starts off with the flagship of drag racing. And you'll see a lot more of that to come in the future, and we're going to look back, and you're going to like, one day you're going to be like, A.B., look at all this. I'm like, I'm going to be like, wow. You did it. And we're like, look, look where we came from, and look where we're at now. You mentioned Erica Enders wrapping up her championship here in Vegas. One of the things that I love about drag racing is diversity has been part of this sport for a very long time, and I think it goes back to the simple element. You look in the grandstands, speed, the love of speed knows no age, knows oh. no gender, knows mm. no race, knows oh. no background. It is just... Uh, it's almost a, a sensory explosion on every level, especially with our sport. You can see it, you can taste it, you can touch it, you can hear it, you can smell it, and it'll make you cry. <laughs> when you look at the success that you have, that undoubtedly puts you in a position of being a leader. It also allows you to be in a position of for other competitors and racers uh, to find you, find themselves in you. How does your success allow you to inspire maybe the next generation of African American racer? The, the main thing of, of it is like our sport of drag racing. What it does is, is the access, all access. And then for me, what it does is, when I was a kid, I only could talk about what happened to me. I was able to go see my heroes up close, like your big daddy Don Garlitz, right? Go in that pit. What that did for me was give me that ray of hope on how to get there, because I saw how to get there. And then as I got older, I'm like, I envision myself being there. And then for me to inspire the next generation is when they see me, they can see part of their self. When a girl comes to a track and see a Erica Enders, a Leah, they can see Angel, they can see, like, you know, and then you can, and you can see, you can see actually a Hispanic kid come there and they can see a Cruz Pedregon. They can see a Hector, Hector Arana Jr. You follow what I mean? They can see themselves. And when they see themselves, like, hey, that's somebody that looks a little bit like me. But for me, when I was a kid, it didn't make a difference who I saw that looked like me. You know what I mean? I saw Kenny Bernstein. 
I thought Kenny Stern Bernstein was a was a brother because that Joker had an ultra perm back when I was growing up. <laughs> I said that is the craziest, like dirty blonde Jerry Curl I ever saw in my entire life. <laughs> that is hilarious. You get what I mean? I'm like, check yes. out. I'm like, look at him. Check out Kenny because that Joker was dark and black to do. I said, I ain't never seen a dirty blonde Jerry Curl in my life. He had it. Yes, he did. Right, so at the end of the day, choking aside, the thing about it is, is to inspire people is just show them the opportunity and giving them the opportunity. And for me at AB Motorsports, that's why we partner with people like Western Tech, Technical College. I have a guy on my team that's from Jamaica. He's from Jamaica, and he talks Jamaican. His name is Adrian Ferguson, and he came on my team, and I went to college with people that were from Trinidad and Jamaica. So he came on my team. I go, oh, I'm on. He goes, you Jamaican? I'm like, no, man. But welcome. And, and welcome. <laughs> and what well, means what's going on, like what's up? And just talk to him, and it's so cool because now – People are seeing them on social media and chatting them up. And now people are like, man, we out there. You know what I mean? And then when they see the gals in our pits mm -hmm. cracking these things apart, the little girls from Junior Dragsters race, you go to Junior Dragsters, there's girls, there's just many girls and boys out there racing. Oh, well, we just had a 20-year-old beat Tony Stewart on national television, so that was pretty cool, too. <laughs> yes. And where does she come from? Madison Payne, Junior Dragsters, family from drag racing. So the coolest part is, is when you're able to see that and see them actually come in and like, hey, I see me there, I see them there, I'm there. And when you're doing that, you're just blazing that trail for them to be the next ones in line. And, and whether we like it or not, that's our job, that's what we do. Thank you for joining us for the Fireside Chat here with Antron Brown.